This is what is written at the end of all legal reports that we come across, isn't it? And many of us relies solely on these three four lines to accept the property for mortgage. But is this the correct way? Then what is the need of four five page long report if only this much was required? LSR or legal scrutiny report or simply legal reports are an integral part of the documents we obtain for sanctioning a loan. Although different banks are having different formats to prepare such report, the overall concept remains same. If you stay with us till the end, you will learn what are the main constituents of legal report, how to examine the flow of title, best practices that I follow at my workplace, landlock properties, how to avoid the trap. A legal report usually comprises of list of documents verified by the panel advocate, description of the properties, flow of title for the last 15 or 30 years depending on your bank's guideline. Yes, there are other constituents as well like a search report, encumbrance certificate, certificate of genuineness, certificate of validity and marketability of title which are equally important. But today we will focus on first three, particularly the flow of title which is most crucial to understand. You can always pause the video to read the basic information on all this. List of document is the place where everything starts. These documents are verified by the advocate before giving his report. Once he submits the report, our first responsibility is to check whether these documents are submitted along with the report. If any of them found missing, immediately take up the matter with the advocate. You might be wondering why advocate and not the loan applicant directly. My friends, please understand the basic of document verification cycle. The customer will approach you for a loan. You have to collect all the documents from him in original. Then. Prepare a covering letter addressed to the advocate of your choice along with the list. Either hand it over to him personally or send it by post. Once necessary verification is done and report is prepared, the advocate has to hand over the documents to the branch. Under no circumstance, you should utilize the customer as a postman delivering and collecting the documents from advocate. Any documents received from the customer should mandatorily get verified by the advocate. So what will happen in case of a takeover account? The main title deed is with another bank, right? How your advocate will verify the same? Keep guessing, I will answer that in a while. Here you can see my advocate has written whether he has verified the original or the Xerox or the certified copy. Everything looks fine, right? However, there is one issue. The issue is with the Xerox copies or the photocopies to be precise. My friends, first let us understand what is this original document and what is a certified copy? When A wants to purchase a property from B, something called sale deed is written, where all the terms and conditions of this transaction are recorded. Both of them signs it, gets it stamped as per respective act, then they approach the nearby registrar office or sub-registrar office and get this transaction recorded in the books of government. A unique number is assigned to this document and a copy is stored in the database of registrar. 
mostly it is digital nowadays this document which is the original is now given back to mr a but a record of each page i mean the exact copy is permanently maintained at the register office this is a public record anyone on paying the requisite fees can always get a copy of the documents which is an exact replica of the original one this is called a certified copy now if a wants to avail a mortgage loan and approach you with this original document first your advocate should get the certified copy of the same from the registrar then carry out a page by page verification comparing with the original one to check if the original one that is the one submitted by your customer is matching with the one maintained with registrar not only that he verifies the transaction happened against this property plot number or dag number or whatever name you call it in your place if the advocate has really conducted a search in the registrar office he will submit a search receipt which looks like this of course the issuer will vary depending on your location i emphasize on this search receipt for quite a few obvious reason first of all this is a proof that indeed a search was carried out by your advocate and he has not issued a certificate just like that please verify the name of the advocate mentioned in the search receipts many a times you will find name of a person other than your advocate why you know lawyers are extremely busy in their profession sometimes they might not visit the registrar office personally and send someone else that's perfectly all right however he has to mention that in the certificate as well so that you on a later date can get it confirmed please don't miss out this checkpoint i believe the process itself explains why it is so important to obtain the certified copy of the documents xerox or photocopies can only be used to get the exact number of the documents because even today some of them are handwritten and literally illegible but frankly speaking they are not of any other use the main purpose of the legal report is to arrive at a conclusion regarding who holds the title of the property how he became the title holder what documents he needs to submit so that the bank can create a mortgage on the property the first and third points are relatively easy to understand but as a banker you should be able to draw a clear picture regarding the flow of title if there is a confusion while drawing this picture further clarification is to be obtained from the advocate never ever accept a property if this picture is not clear depending on the nature of transaction the flow of title flows like a river sometimes in the form of sale deed when purchase and sale is involved sometimes in the form of a gift deed or even a partition deed sometimes there are no documents at all yes simply by virtue of succession an individual can become the title holder of a property in that case family member certificate or legal heir certificate issued by tehsildar plays a crucial role in many places where issuance of both the certificates are not in practice as a banker you must insist for mutation of the property that will give you some sort of cushion whatever might be the case it is the job of the advocate to describe in writing how he has concluded that your customer is the title holder and as a banker you have to read that in plain simple english and conclude 
whether this flow of title makes any sense or not. Take for example, here Srimati Durga purchased a land of 460 square yards from Mr. Vishnu on 15-7-1975 and the document was registered by this document number at the sub-register office of Vijayawada. On the other hand, Mr. Shiva purchased 453 square yards on 15-7-1975 from Mr. Nagarjuna and others. Later, both of them died. They had a son and a daughter who became joint owners of the property by virtue of succession. If you quickly glance through the list of documents pursued by the advocate, he has referred to something called family member certificate which was issued by the Tahsildar. Later on, a partition deed was executed between the brother and sister by virtue of which the daughter got rupees 10 lakhs and Mr. Ganesh, who is your customer, became the owner of the property. If you observe carefully, the extent of land was originally 453 plus 460, that is 913 square yards. But due to road widening activities, 12 square yards were acquired by the government. Now why I stress on this? Because these are the little information you must cross check with the valuation report. Personally, I prefer to draw the flow of title like this. As I read along the report, it consists of few basic information on how the title or ownership moved from one person to another. So once this picture is clear, we may conclude that Mr. Ganesh is the title holder of this property without any ambiguity. You may pause the video at this point and take a while to understand the concept. This was the actual flow of title given by the advocate and the earlier diagram was designed out of this. Now let us see another example where legal report apparently looks alright but it's having multiple shortcomings. You can see in this report the advocate has mentioned that the land was acquired by Mr. Shiva Sopti, but there is no mention of how he acquired the same. Was it acquired through succession or purchase or gift? The report is silent. Moreover, there is no reference to documents through which the same was acquired. It seems Mr. Shiva gifted the land to few of the individuals. But exactly who were they and how many of them, it's not clear. Terms like applicant's father, his brothers should have been replaced by exact names of individuals in order to avoid any ambiguity whatsoever. Remarks like unnamed son or minor should be critically looked through magnifying glasses. In this case, the advocate did not refer any documents regarding the existence or non-existence of this unnamed child. So with all these shortcomings, this legal report stands rejected. Now let me talk about few best practices which I usually follow at my workplace. Always cross-check the extent of land mentioned in the legal report with the valuation report. They must be same. If they differ, seek explanation from your valuer and the lawyer. Get the soft copy of the legal report that is the word file from the advocate. It will help you in preparing the sanction letter and mortgage document where you need to mention the details of the mortgage. Even a minor mistake in the description of property can prove costly. In case of corporate borrowers, no one is going to hand over the original deed before you give them the sanction letter. And that is not advisable also. So once the loan is sanctioned and the borrower agrees to your terms and conditions, 
just before the mortgage get the original title deed verified by the pen lawyer remember this is the last line for verification and after this you are not supposed to part with the documents until and unless the loan is closed same applies to takeover loans the search and everything gets concluded before you even see the original you get to hold the original after the loan is released and the amount reaches the bank from whom the account was taken over but before you pack everything inside the vault just get in touch with your advocate and let him verify the title deed along with the certified copy which you already have and issue a certificate in this regard cross check the boundaries mentioned in the legal report and valuation report in some cases they might be different because legal report boundaries are mentioned based on the title deed which might have been prepared say 30 years back however valuation mentions the latest one don't forget to verify the correctness on your physical visit you can end up accepting a landlocked properties if the boundaries are not checked properly at the time of sanction let us suppose mr a is the owner of 100 square yards of land he acquired this through a sale deed number 123 bar 2019 he sold 50 square yards to b by document number 456 bar 2019 he has now approached the bank for a mortgage loan now can you tell me which document he will deposit with the bank to avail this loan it's document number 123 bar 2019 but this document mentions 100 square yards of land right with a road on the north ironically he has sold 50 square yards out of this 100 and now there is no entrance to this land there is no way you can ascertain the same from deed number 123 bar 2019 if the customer doesn't disclose regarding the transaction with b when you look at the legal report you may find the same old boundaries camouflaged with this road if your advocate does a proper search at the registrar office he can surely trace this transaction with b remember i have already told that a search is conducted on the plot number or the dag number so in order to avoid any ambiguity or confusion on a later date a certified copy of document number 456 bar 2019 is to be obtained so that you know the new boundaries of the remaining land which you are going to mortgage valuation report with clear demarcation will give a real picture but above all it has to be confirmed by physical verification by branch preferably along with the valuer your valuer is the person who is expected to guide you in the right direction still remain any element of doubt it is advisable to obtain a boundary declaration deed in such case